Hi, ladies. So today we're going to do a teaching on to stand up and be counted, and and really about about living in the fullness of what God created you to to live for, to your calling at the end of the day. Okay. So before we begin, let's pray. Our Father, I come to you in the name of King Yeshua, Jesus. And I ask you, Lord, to open our ears, open our eyes, and open our hearts so we can hear what you want us to hear in this message today. Our Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit come in and fill me and that you speak and not I speak, that it's you, Lord. It's all about you. And life is better with you, Lord. And may we be obedient and may we glorify your name. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Okay, so so we have been called to become fishers of men and to make disciples of people. And to walk in the kingdom of God. If our identity is in Christ and we're born again, then we will enter into the secret place that is in God's kingdom where five bread loaves and two fish are multiplied to feed 5,000 people, where storms are filled at a mere command and, and where we can move mountains because of our faith. If we are rooted in Him, we can live in the fullness of God's calling for us and nobody Nobody can change our direction because God is in control. It is absolutely important that I tell you who Jesus is. And the reason for that is that years ago, I had a prophetic dream about a woman that was at my company, at my work. She was working with me and I didn't know her. I just saw her. Like every day you see this woman, but we never spoke. I didn't know her name. I knew nothing about her. We didn't hang out. And I had this dream about her standing and cooking while her husband is sitting on the couch and he's dishing out all these commands. He's telling her what to do and how to do it and she has to look after the kids. And, and I mean, I saw her. She's tired. She's milk, huh? She's tired. So God said, tell her that if she submits to him and she gives her life to him, he will sort all of that out for her. So the following day at work, I sit at the table at the kiosk or, or you know, we, we, we get food and I see this woman walk in and now I'm worried because I'm not sure is this message from God is it not so I, I sort of make a deal with God I say God okay so if she sits at my table this woman I don't know then I will give her the word of knowledge I will give her the part of of what she said about her husband and if she confirms it that word then I will give her your message so she comes and she sits by me and I'm like, okay. So I tell her, look, I had a dream about you. I tell her about her couch potato husband. And she's astounded. She's like, that's my life. And I say to her, sorry guys, I think my earring is causing problems there. Um, I say to her, I say to her, okay, I've got a message from God for you. Okay. And I say to her, God says, and I said, God, nothing else. I said, God says, that oh I see there's more people wanting to there we go I said to her God said that um that he will change things for you if you submit to him and give your life to him okay and she was all excited and she went and she did it but then I found out she's Muslim and she turned to Allah and I was devastated so I tried everything, everything to tell her that this message is from Jesus. That's my God. It's not another God. And she just doesn't want to listen. And that's the day I vowed that I will never, ever make that mistake again. If I give you a message, you will know that the message is from Jesus. And that is why I need to tell you who Jesus is before we start any of this or as we go through this. So who is Jesus? Jesus' Hebrew name is Yeshua, and Yeshua means Jehovah is Savior. 
And I can elaborate on all these things, but there's no time to do that. So, Jesus is the Son of God who came in the flesh to take all the sins on, of the world on him. So, so he's the perfect Lamb of God who sacrificed himself, his life, so that we don't have to. Why? Because we've just got too much sin. And in God's eyes, he's holy. So he, you need to be holy in front of him. So he, there has to be Jesus that stands between you and God to open that door. So in Romans, now I'm missing the scripture here. In Romans 1, 5 and Leviticus 18, verse 5, the scripture says that those who does the law of God will live by them. So basically, it's absolutely impossible to die if you follow God's law 100%, okay? And none of us have the ability to do that. So Paul said in Romans 7, verse 7, that it's because of the law that he knows what sin is. God also said to Adam in Genesis 2, verse 17, that if he eats of the forbidden fruit, if he sins, if he's disobedient, he will surely die. So the question is that how can Yeshua die? If he did the law 100%, okay? So the answer is quite simple. In the law, it's written in Deuteronomy, the English is harder, and in Galatians 3.13, that cursed is the one who hangs on a tree. Okay, so Jesus became a curse for us the moment he hung on a tree or he was on a wooden cross. And that is how he could actually physically die, okay? So, he was the Lamb of God without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle, sacrificed 100% for us. But then, no sin could be found in him. So what happened? The Holy Spirit had to resurrect him from the dead after three days and three full nights, okay? Because death couldn't hold him down. So he was victorious over death. Okay. Okay. So before I carry on, let me tell you a little bit about my God encounter. It was in January 2010. I was high as a kite on drugs. I convinced that I, I took too much drugs. I'm about to die. I was retrained from work. Everybody that I knew, it was a work day, so everyone I knew was at work. So I pretty much made my peace with the fact that I'm about to die. I'm going to have to do this alone. So I might as well just watch a movie while I'm at it. And I grabbed a movie called Flywheel, which my sister lent me, or borrow. Can I die to a sister? Because I get it wrong because I'm, I'm up to gone, isn't it? Okay, so, so anyway, so... And in this movie, I'm watching this movie and I see this guy's incredible relationship with God and how he loves him. And I'm sitting there thinking, but I've never had that. And I'm convicted and I want that. And I drop on my knees and I start, um, um, sh not shouting, but I'm, I'm and in the innermost part of my being, I'm, I'm sort of screaming out to God, going, God, Jesus, yes, not yes, I said, I said, Lord. Lord, I do not love you, but I want to love you. And I do not have a relationship with you, but I want one. And as I said that, like that, I sobered up. I had this incredible, miraculous encounter with God. And that was me. From there, 28 January 2010, I became a believer. I, I gave my life to the Lord. He became the love, the lover of my soul, the love of my life. And from that day, I've never, ever stopped believing that the only way to have everlasting life with Yeshua and to, to live in the presence of Father God is through Yeshua. I've never stopped believing that no matter how hard life has become because life isn't always easy. It's not always moonshine and roses just because you're a child of God. It is hard. It is difficult. In fact, I want to say that it becomes harder sometimes than for the people that don't have God because now you're up against the devil. Né? And I like, he doesn't like that, that, that he's lost you. Okay? So no, it's not always easy. 
But the great thing is that I've never, ever had to face it alone. Never, ever. He's always been there. There's always been a way through. There's always been hope. You have a purpose. You have been made for more than a mediocre life. You, you've been created for something more. Not to be lonely, but to always have God with you. You are a child of God. You are bride to the King of Kings. And that rider on the white horse that most people dream about, that's Jesus. And he's coming back and he's coming for his bride. And I know that you want to be part of his bride. <laughs> it's written in, in Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the law and the day of vengeance of our God. Remember, God takes the revenge, not us. We don't have to fight. He fights for us. We'll get to that. To comfort all who mourn. To console those who mourn and die on. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I'm sure some of you have tried this. Where, where things are just too heavy. You're depressed. You're angry. You're whatever it is. You're emotional. And you put up some praise and worship. And you feel better when you're praising God. It, it is the weirdest thing. God's kingdom works different. And we get to tap into this because we're children of God, because we love Him, because we're born again. Okay? And that they may be called trees of righteousness. Remember, we planted into the vine, and Jesus is the vine. So we become trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that He may be glorified the reason why Jesus came is exactly that it's that scripture but that is also why we are here and we are fellow heirs of Christ so we have to follow him and do what he has done and, and what he has commanded I look at this picture this image that I put up here and and I asked myself this question. I said, why, Lord, did he, Jesus, have to die such a gruesome death for us? Why was he beaten, tortured? Why did he have to suffocate to death? Why so harsh? How can you do this to your only begotten son, Lord? And the answer is quite simple. Because then we cannot say, that he doesn't understand. Because he does. He's been through it all. He's been through the worst. And he did it. He did it for you. For you. I often get people saying to me that, Oh, but we all serve the same God. You know, and, and that simply isn't true. It simply isn't true. The Christian God speaks. He has, he has a voice. I was astounded when I found out after being reborn that God speaks and you can actually hear him. I, I was astounded. Okay? I just want to see there's a chat here. Okay. So, our God has an intimate fellowship with us. He's not a distant God. With our God, He did everything, everything, so that we can be restored to Him, so that we can get to Him. But with all the other faith, you have to work to get to your God, little bit. You have to work and work and do this and sacrifice that, and you have to go walk around a little thingy there, some black thing over there. And you, you have to do all these things and it's still not enough. You never get to your God. He still remains different. This distance. The only thing that we need to do 
is we need to believe that Yeshua is the Son of God. That He came in the flesh for us. That He died for us and that He rose again. That's all we have to do. It's also written in, in James 22 verse 20 that faith with, without works is dead. And that's correct. Faith without works are dead. But I tell you that if you have faith, if you trust God, you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. And your faith will be proven by your works. It will not be by your own power or your own might. You can't do this in yourself. But it will be by the Ruach HaKodesh. The Holy Spirit, the breath of God, God Himself. Yeshua, Jesus, He loves you. I mean, He really, He really, really loves you. Yeshua loves you so much. He sacrificed, sacrificed Himself for you. He overcame death for you. He rose from the dead for you. And he's coming back and we can rule with him a thousand years here on earth. We can, we can love him. We can worship him. We can, we can live. We, we can, we can eventually end up with Father in heaven in the mansion that Jesus prepared for us and live with him forever, forever and ever and ever and see our loved ones again. His hope. And all we have to do is we have to really trust Him. And then start living like a child of God. The great thing about being a child of God is that the line of Judah is behind you roaring. I mean, look at this image. I got this on my birthday from a friend. And, and this image is just, it, it's been with me all this time. There's a line of Judah standing behind me, roaring, especially when things get tough. I mean, imagine for a moment, just take a moment and think about that person that is right now, they are antagonizing you, they are treating you, um, humiliating you, they are being unfair toward you. Think about that for a moment. Now, close your eyes, think. As you see this line of Judah, standing behind you and he's roaring. I mean, he's going, Rawr! okay, I know you like that. <laughs> Let's do that again. Rawr! He's roaring. And, and you know, on those cartoons, you see that hair going backwards there as <laughs> in the lion roars. So the hair is even going backwards. His wings, his roar is working. His breath. And he's fighting for you. You don't have to take revenge. You don't have to say a word. You do what is right and he will do the rest. He will fight for you and he does it the right way. As humans, we kind of mess it up when we try to, to take vengeance or take revenge. It doesn't work. You have to allow him. So you stand strong in your identity and who he is and who you are in him. And he will fight for you. So we almost have a, a closing point here. So all that remains. So all that you need to do from here is you need to believe, believe in Yeshua, and you become a child of God. You are saved by faith, by trust in Him. You believe that He has died for you on a cross, and He's been resurrected, and He sits at the right hand of the Father right now, and that He is going to return. That's all we need to do. He will do the rest. He will finish the work that is taught in you. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. So yes, there's, there's a formula. We can't put God in a box. Okay? But, but let's, let's give you the base. You believe. Be baptized unto repentance in water. Be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Spirit, become a disciple of Jesus, and then you go and you make more disciples. You become fishers of men. That's what we commanded. That's what we do. Now, some people have a block. 
Now, if you feel you've got a block, you can't break through, then go see a spiritual counselor. They will take you through a process of repentance, renunciation, renewal of the mind. Okay? And it is, it's work. The renewal of the mind is a continuous thing. I think you can speak to any believer, no matter how old or how many people they, they have uh, laid hands on and healed. You can speak to all of them and they will tell you, I renew my mind daily. It is a continuous process. I will put details in the description that you can contact me and then I will try and set you up with, with a counselor that will help you. So, we want to be a disciple in this kingdom. Here's two scriptures that just stood out for me. John 13, 35 says, By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Now, I want to read you something. I saw something last night, and it just popped out at me. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change that love word for you into this. So, love is like faith. It's not a feeling. It's an action. It's an action word. It's a do. Okay? So, it says here, doing things for the benefit of another person. That is, having an unselfish concern for another and willingness to seek the best for another. So this is what it says. It says, by this, all will know that you are my disciples. If you have an unselfish concern for another and a willingness to seek the best for another. That's how you know you're a disciple. Love. John fifteen sixteen says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. It's not always easy. And sometimes you won't get it right and sometimes you will. But don't stop trying. Spend a lot of time in God's word, prayer and worship. And then you'll see how he will multiply, multiply the bread loaves and fish that you have in your hand. Listen to this. Listen to what God says about you as a child of God. Listen to this. He says this. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. You're special to God. That you may proclaim the praises of you who called you out of darkness into this marvelous life. You are called to be in his service. You've been given spiritual authority over demons and over all the power of the enemy. God has gifted you with gifts from the Holy Spirit. I mean, there's healing, there's wisdom, there's knowledge, there's prophetic word. There's just so many things. Go read 1 Corinthians 12. You'll see it. We live for Him. We no longer live for ourselves. Being a child in His kingdom means that we are His ambassadors here on earth. We are his body. We're called into his kingdom. We call his kingdom into being. Okay? I mean, Jesus, whenever he was walking around, he said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then he would, he would heal people. That's what we can do. We're called to make a difference. To bring his life. Remember the first command? The first command said, let there be life. We are called to be His light here on earth in the darkness. The past is no longer relevant. So I'm asking you today, will you put your past behind you? Will you submit to the call from the King, the command? It says there, for many are called but few are chosen. Are you willing to lay down your life today and take up this calling that God, Jesus, who died for you, sacrificed himself for you, has given you. I think it's time that for us to stand up and be counted.
I'm going to pray now, especially for someone who's listening to this today who wants to give their heart to the Lord, who's never had the opportunity to to be a child of God, to get that opportunity today. So if we can just close our eyes. Abba Father, I, I come to you today and I, I petition in your courtroom, O oh Holy, Holy Father, Jesus, perfect Lamb of God, line of Judah. That anyone who is watching this today, that their heart may be open, that they will lay down their life for you today, that they will that they will repent of their sins, they will tell you about it and they will turn back from it and change their ways and fully commit to you, Lord, and make you the Lord of their life. Where, they, where their feet are on fire to carry the gospel to the ends of the earth and their hearts remain on fire and their ears open to what you want to say and do and that they bring your kingdom wherever they go. Lord. Give them clarity about their purpose. Lord. Give them clarity about their calling. Lord. Talk to them so they can hear you. I pray that that fear will dissipate now in the name of Jesus. I chase out any demonic power now that is that is scrambling ears and, and confusing messages in the name of Jesus. Open your ears to the shepherd because his sheep hear his voice and they follow him. I pray that the Lord will start a work in you and that fruit will just flow out of you. Mm. Thank you, Lord, that we can do this. Thank you, Lord, that you came for us. Thank you, Lord, you are worthy to be praised. I pray yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes, sure. Amen. I just want to say, thank you to our Creator God and our Redeemer, our Father, our Friend, our Healer, our Provider. Thank you, Father, that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but Father, that you have given us a spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind. And Lord, that you will do the same for those who submit their lives to you. Because that is what you want to impart to your children. To those who submit to you, Lord, and who love you and reverently fear you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that you are not only a God of love, of, but also a just God. Thank you, Lord, for your absolute patience and your grace upon our lives. And Lord, I am often in awe to think that you've given us the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead. And how often we underestimate what's been given to us. I pray, Lord, that you would make us realize what you've given us. And that we will tap into your Holy Spirit, Father, and be so much more sensitive to your voice and your guidance and your truth, your will. And I also praise you and thank you that we can freely have access to your word. That we are not persecuted in this country for reading the Bible. What an absolute priceless gift that you've given your children. 
I thank you for that, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.